without any problem. That's wonderful. So if I go back to table again, zoop, automatically it moves. All right, this is just by changing there. And this code is very nice. So if I have a look just at if we select a query, we close a query, we add a nice query statement to it, we clear it, select the count, this is accounting, hey? and um, over here we have a head and a group by customer title. So we've got a query that's going to select more than one aggregate value, but it's grouped by we open the query and I just say the data set is query 1. The data source is connected to the DB grid and because it's connected to the DB grid, the DB grid which displays our data, it will display this result set instantaneously, a data set field. Isn't that wonderful? I can also iterate through the query because I've, I know I'm going to select get at least two records here because there's males and females. I could now also open the query. I could go to the first record of the query and get the value from the field. So the field value title town dot value and this is how I'm going to access it very very easy and I really I'm an avid supporter of this way of logic all right and that's it the last thing we would like to do is to check the current cell phone number so again checking the current cell phone number if we have a look at our application that's running if we click on that one we want to get access to that current record we want to pass that cell to our method what do we need to do firstly we're getting the one and then I say check cell phone number Past the current one, I want to get access to that current cell phone number. All right, wonderful. So if I want to get access to it, it's ADO table one field by name customer cell. Isn't that wonderful? Or ADO query field by name customer cell. That is just to get the correct value depending if you're working on the table or the query. Okay, and then I set my value and then I just invoke my method is valid. Now you may ask, but where have I created my check phone object? My check phone object was created over here when I the form was shown for the first time so that's wonderful so there it was instantiated so now I can use that object everywhere because I made it part as part of my public attributes of my form so it's visible throughout all the events of my form that's wonderful actually all right and um, there I'm and if it's valid then I show a nice message also invoking my own class methods there to build up a string for display purposes all right so if we just run it there we go if you check the current cell phone number say so the phone number we retrieve that value for Vodacom is okay all right and I really think that that is a very powerful very nice way of working with data and now you would say yeah but what about navigating through the record you use a navigator here you want the children to do it let's do it then I'm going to add um, two buttons in the runtime over here and um, then in that two buttons I would like to go to the previous and to the next record invoking methods if it's on the table so we could do that that would be easy code to add and that we will do just now all right so we said that we are going to add to our form as it's running currently it's just run this let's just stop the application just run it sorry we would like to add two buttons over here a prior and the next and then um, the prior will go to the previous record and the next will go to the next record but we would only like to do it if we are in the query alright so or if we are in a table so that's good so we're going to go to the design view we're going to quickly drag and drop two buttons on it okay I'm not going to give it nice names I'm just this is just for illustrative purposes I can copy and paste that button there and let's say for button one slick event I could give it ah, but that's not the idea we can first decide all right what is firstly very important um what we would like to do is we'd like to move the record pointer so we can say ADO table one or I called it ADO table one we can give it nice names not the idea ADO table one dot prior we'll go to the previous record so there I'm invoking one of the methods all right and for the next one ADO table very easy to um, create the the, the event handler as well ADO table 2 dot next All right, and here we go if we then run it we shouldn't get any problems oh we've got two little errors ADO table where undefined oh, not ADO table I don't have ADO table 2 I'm sorry but it, at least we know that it highlights our code if there's something wrong nice compiler um, if I'm now in the table mode I can go and then use the method to navigate through my 
data set that's being displayed via my grid. So that's wonderful. Another mention that the CAPS document makes is the use of built-in data set event handlers. Now this is true, I know, specifically for the Delphi environment as well as for the .NET environment, where if we have a look at the table component, there's some very, very nice events that we could trigger. And this is especially nice when the learners is going to develop some of their paths and so forth, all right? We've got very nice events here. For instance, after edit, after the record has been edited, after scroll, after the record has scrolled. This one is one that often is used, that when you move from one record to another or one data set record to another, you would like something to occur. That's a very nice um, before scroll, before you scroll, on calculate fields. On calculate fields is also a very, very nice uh, event handler to place on, for instance, um, and to use. For Sometimes you would like to incorporate a calculated field, the same as you would have with a query. We could add it over here and it is automatically calculated. Wonderful. Um, on new record. On new record is an excellent method. Sometimes you would like to define some default values when a new record is to be inserted. Then we could use it over here. Um, this is very easily accessible using the Delphi environment over here as well as in the .NET environment where it is accessible via a specific delegate. So that is wonderful. The CAPS document makes explicit mention of the use of data set methods um, to perform certain data set operations or oh, some other nice after delete maybe you would like to after the record has been deleted do something very very nice events over here that we could use within a table component i wonder if i can show you maybe just an easy one let's add an on calculate event all right so my table we just need to set the table properties now uh, my table properties there we've got our provider and the table name i haven't set because i did it in code but i could also do it via the object inspector let's say i would like to set it to customers all right and now if i right click on my table go to the fields editor right click and i can add all my fields there's all my fields now this fields become objects that is part of my application and the nice thing about that now is that i could go and i could now drag and drop those components on my form um, but let's say i won't want to do that let's say the only thing i would like to do is to display for the current record um, then we're gonna, let's say we want to evaluate the um, points. If the point is more than 4,000, then this customer must be considered a gold customer. Otherwise, if the point is less than 4,000, then the customer must be considered a normal customer or a, let's say a bronze customer. So very easy on the table over there, on the events, on calculated fields. All right. On calculated fields, there it created calculated fields, but we need to add a field, add a new field. All right, in this new field, let's call it customer point status. You can call it whatever you want to. The type, let's obviously, is going to be a string because we want to say um, the customer is a gold or a bronze. It's a calculated field. There we go. The size, let's say the size is 20 characters. I click on OK, and then we have on change, on validate. Very wonderful. I'll show one of those just now as well. But let's say customer point status and on calculated fields there. All right. Sorry. And then we're going to say, all right, customer. It's on the table. So it will be ADO. It becomes one of the objects. Very nice. Customer point status. The value. All right, oops, sorry, customer point status, the value is either going to be gold or the value is going to be bronze. All right, very easy there. All right, and we must now validate and check it against the points. So we can say if ADO, oopsie. If ADO table one, customer points, because I added my fields over here, they are now all field objects, so I can access them directly, or I could have said ADO table one field by name, but this is to show that object orientation is inherently part, because now we're working with field objects, so it's actually very, very easy. Let's have a look. Customer points there, if the value of the customer points, if it's greater than, let's say, 4,000, all right, then the customer 
must be a gold else the customer is a bronze all right and i think that would work so we have it over here let's save everything let's run everything let's have a look what the compiler does and wonderful so over here that field was automatically inserted on my db grid and here i can see which are my gold customers and which are my bronze customers. This is just one of the very nice things that we in can incorporate working with some of the data set event handlers, um, which is part of the CAPS document in order to make database so, so nice. We could even incorporate, for instance, uh, a little bit of, let's say, validation. Let's add one validate event, just one for, um, I'm not going to use exception handling, just a plain, normal validation. Let's say the customer points the customer points on validate we display all right the customer points on validate we want to incorporate a specific on validate event sorry i doubled i pressed the button over here that must just get out sorry um over there customer points on validate and you can say if ado table and now again we can also refer but we can say customer points if it is less than let's say if it's less it may not be less than 100. I hope there's nobody that has less than 100. Then begin. And then we could say, oh, I could do it with an exception. But let's just put the show message. Show, it will be easier. Show message. Points must be more than, oops, sorry. That's C++ plus plus for me. Points must be more than 100, just for interest sake. All right, so let's just run it. And it's complaining over there. Oh, if that value, I beg your pardon. If the value there of is less than 100, then the points must be less. So let's just have a look. Let's go now and let's go and edit Barry Schrumpf. And let's say we would like to edit the data. Oh, the DB grid is editable. So we could edit the data directly. So this makes it very nice. Let's say we'd like to make the data 50. And there we go. It says the points must must be more. So then I could change it over here. Now, normally if I did an exception handling one, then um, it will take it. And again, this data now is part of my record. So that is all some of the nice um, data set event handlers that we could incorporate as part of our program. It's really fun and working with databases and connecting to any type of database is nogal a joy if we use the Embarcadero suite. Um, and this is very, very nice, spe specifically if kids wants to do some nice applications using um, databases. Um, I could expand this very, very easily. I could incorporate another form that, for instance, will display all the orders that was made by this specific customer. And... Um, I'll consider it and then maybe just in this tutorial additionally quickly just add a button so that we can show all the orders that has been placed by this specific customer and I'll decide if I want to incorporate that or not just now. But I really hope that you play around, look at the language from a different perspective, see what has the best educational value for the kids and yeah, have fun. I mean, um, my primary programming language is not Delphi, it's not... Um, Java, it's C++. I'm from the C++ background and I thoroughly also enjoy just working with Delphi and playing around with it. Thank you.